Oh god, look what's on the it's another one on the table, it's another of the dreaded Scorpion tools with the battery damage. Uh that's one sent up to me by a Mecha member and Facebook member, I think it's called Hartley here. Had some issues, don't complain what it was, didn't boot. 12 volt lights stuck on, reset stuck on there. 12 volt lights meant to be on, resets not meant to be on. You see I've got a few wires hanging about here. I'm powering it off of PC power supply over there. I always I always tell people if you want me to get a button, I can get a button, but I can't test reels, lamps and all that. Don't have a scorpion to a machine handy who can just go to the garage and get one. Well probably a lot of you watching this video can. I can't finite amount of space so along with it first of all that link wire there um when you're testing these outside the machine or when you're testing when you're testing these anytime at all you might not just have a board problem you might have a power supply problem there's a line that comes off the power supply called the vmm line it's like a you get a rippling signal comes into that uh, that transistor there that's called VMM transistor and what it does if that isn't getting a pulse and signal it holds the reset off it, it stops the board from working that's one here is the watchdog if that isn't getting a pulse it stops the board from working but get back to that later anyway to bypass to bypass all that you can simply bypass the reset by clipping onto the top of these seven there and grounding it and it just takes the reset out I mean you can see this here yeah see off Anyways, the board has been getting worked on for a while. It's been worked on a few times and it has some questionable things about it. I mean, there is this up here. And I don't want to juggle the board about too much, but let's see if we can see it. Up there. You can just see a few questionable solder joints up there. And then there's... Over there, there's our transistor on the back of the board, which will probably need to be fixed. I think that's that one there, TR31. I think someone cut the old one off and then they've just sold a new one on the back to test it. They've just it broke off and they've moved it, but wasn't the issue. Um, there's quite a bit of battery damage out here that's been cleaned off. Somebody's been buzzing out traces. Uh, not much of that was an issue. I mean, this will need to be tidied up, but it's basically okay. They've just the vias have been reflowed. It's just they've used too much solder held down on too long, and too much solder flowed through. But that's not the problem. Right, I'll explain to you what the problem is. When you're working on these boards, when you work on any pro processor board, be it fruit machine or computer, or whatever. Before anything else can work, you need good voltage, you need a good reset signal, and your CPU needs to be able to talk to the ROM, needs to be able to talk to the RAM, and needs to be able to talk to the address decoding. With Scorpion 2 boards, a lot of people make the same mistake. They'll buzz out from here to here, to here, to here, to here. And they'll buzz out from there and there, and they'll buzz out and check like that. That's by the way, is your digital sound circuit. No wrong minute, and at the minute, it doesn't matter because we don't get far enough to test digital sound. Any sound you do here in this video is coming out of the little Yamaha chip there, which the machine uses to send the alarm signal. Anyway, I was saying people buzz out from there to there to here. They forget something though. There is a thing with Scorpion 2 that you don't see on other systems. This ROM here, by the way, ignore that little bed pin there, that, this ROM works. The code in the ROM is partially encrypted. Now it's a simple encryption, all they do is they scramble some of the address lines. And A15, for example, won't go. Is it A15? I think it might be A15. I might be wrong. But some of the ROM, some of the address bus connections that are there 
I'll boss to there, but you'll find when you're trying to boss out, they won't boss to there. They'll boss to different places. Some of them will boss to here. And some of the standard address lines will boss to there. So you think people forget is the address decode on a Scorpion 2 isn't just this and this and this. It's nothing to do with that. That PAL chip there is just for the pace lights. It's basically a, a decoder to tell, to tell it which pace light to drive, to talk in layman's terms. The address decoder in the Scorpion 2 is done by this. This is control multiplexer. And what it does is processor will talk to this as well as the rest of this. And this here decides whether it's going to select ROM or RAM or other parts of the board, whatever. I think this has some stuff to do with the sound circuit as well. It has to do with the alpha drive. The alpha display comes straight off this as well. Uh, what was wrong with this was this buzzed out to this. I'm pretty sure we buzzed out to this also, but there was one address line, A11, which was missing. Not from here to here, but I couldn't find it on here. So I went off and looked at the data sheets, not for this chip, I mean you don't get a data sheet for this, but for a PL80, PLCC86 socket. And you see I mark pin 1 there, pin 1's always on the, on the bottom with a notch on the right. These are weird sockets by the way, pin 1's not in a corner, it's in the middle. And I counted round. A11 is it's a wee bit tricky to see as ah, perfect. A11 is that pin there. And it should have came to pin 19 in the processor and it didn't. Check the other corresponding pins around it. Check A12, which is the first one, it went to the processor, went up one, it went to the processor. A11 didn't. And I put a wire link on it. And And it works as well if I take the reset bypass off and then I just close down the VMM transistor. The watchdog can run by itself. I, mean, I can probably show that as well. If I just take the ground off, that will bring the reset circuit back into play. It's quite handy having a little popper switch here. Now you see how we're stuck in reset? That's because the VMM doesn't have a signal, but if I close the VMM line down, just by doing that, tricky to do. And there you go. <coughs> So it runs on its own watchdog circuit. And as you can hear, the, the sound circuit is working as well. And I take the VMM off, and it does exactly what it should do. It jams and reset. So, what we'll do with this is we'll clean that up. I'm not going to touch that because it looks like the pads are destroyed underneath. And I'm probably not going to touch that transistor there either because although it's on the bottom of the board, it works. And that's basically it for this one. She's alive. So, it's what, 10 o'clock at night? Mm, I never noticed that. I've got a wee crack in my alpha display there. That's all right though. Let's look at this one. I'm suspecting that that might have something more to do with it this time.
that's not those traces there are gone you can see there's meant to be a trace there and it's just totally destroyed by the battery damage but I fired this up earlier and I get pretty much the same behavior stuck in reset no RAM and no ROM select what does that tell me? probably our little friend the control multiplexer has an issue Probably it has a cut trace as well. So I'll get back to you with more findings and maybe if I, I'm in the mindset later on tonight I'll show you something a bit special too. Bye for now.